Low Hot Exhortations, The Fifth Night. Master Hakuin said to the monks, In the monastery, there are three different lengths of intensive practice. The longest one is 120 days. The middle one is 90 days. And the shortest is 80 days. During these periods, we are determined to clarify this great matter. Therefore, no monk is allowed to go out of the gate, not to speak of engaging in frivolous conversation. The practice of Zen requires only one thing, that is, a daring spirit. I am sure you know the following story. There was a man called Heishiro in Ibarra. He carved a stone of statue of Fudo Myo in stone and placed it in the deep mountains of Yoshihara, long side of waterfall. While he watched the dynamic activity of the waterfall, some bubbles floated along for about a foot and then disappeared. Another bubble went two or three feet and then disappeared. And some of them moved much farther than that, than that but without a fail, all of them disappeared. Seeing this bubble phenomenon due to his accumulated karma, he thoroughly realized that everything in this world is impermanent. Like the bubble on the surface of the water. The impact of this realization deprived him of any peace of mind and his anxiety became completely unbearable. Then it happened that he heard someone reading aloud the Dharma sayings of Master Takusui. For the sentient beings with a daring spirit, awakening may happen without delay. Why? For sentient beings with a lazy spirit attaining nirvana may take three asamkasha, asamkaya buddh, kar, karpas. Inspired by this saying, with great determination, he entered alone into the bath house. He shut the door, locked it from the inside, and sat down. Erecting his spine, he made a tight fist and kept his eyes open. He did the Zen with a fresh, pure spirit. Delusions and hallucinations flew around him like bees. 
When the battle was over, he had cut off, cut, he had cut his life root and he went into deep samadhi without a single thought. At dawn, when he heard the birds singing outside the bathhouse, he could not find his body. He felt as if his two eyes had left their sockets and were on the ground. An instant later, he felt the pain of his nails digging into his clenched fist. Then his eyes returned to their usual place and he was able to stand up. Sitting and standing, he repeated this kind of practice for three days and nights. On the morning of the third day, after washing his face, he looked at the trees in the garden. They seemed very different from before. He felt so strange he visited a priest nearby, but the priest did not understand his experience at all. Heishiro decided to visit me. Kokurin, that's Hakuin. He rode in Prangurin, in and climbed Sata Peak. At the peak, he saw the Paramanic Paramic view of Tagonoura. There, he realized thoroughly that what he had experienced in the bathhouse was none other than grasses, trees, and good earth are primarily all Buddha. He came and immediately entered to my Doksan room and passed a few important koans. Now, he was a mere ordinary man. He had never studied or practiced them before. Nevertheless, sitting for only three days and nights, he was able to pro prove that Buddha realized. With nothing but his daring spirit, he fought his delusions and defeated them all. You, students of Dharma, why don't you have this daring spirit? You must arouse your determination. Almost all 
Zen monasteries in the world are doing now Rohatsu session to celebrate Shakyamuni Buddha's great enlightenment for us all. Therefore, even though our Zazenkai is only for one day, I thought the Teisho text should be from Hakuin Zenji's Rohatsu exhortation. And I picked up the one which I have just read. This Heishiro was living about 400 years ago by Mount Fuji, not so far from where Hakuin Zenji lived. In fact, his descendant is still alive. So, it is not a story in a way, yet it is a story. The there was a place called Yoshihara, not so far from the town called Hara, which is not so far from Mishima, where Ryutakuji is. And uh, over there, there is many waterfalls. So this Heishiro not uh, having uh, any study or practice of uh, Buddhism, nor did Zazen, but had some kind of religious uh, spirit by birth. And evidently, he was skillful to carve the art objects. And uh, he carved Fudo Myo-o. Uh, some of you may know uh, Fudo. It is a protecting deity and uh, the Dharani of Fudo is quite well known. It goes no maku sammanda basala da sendam makara shada suyata yantara da kamman and we repeat this 28 times. Why 28? 28 day of the month, each month is considered as Fudo's uh, day. 
like uh, Kanzeon day is 18th day of each month and Jizo Onka ka kabisamma ye soaka Onka ka kabisamma ye soaka is 24th day of each month Anyway, Heishiro, ordinary man, skillful to create the art objects and have religious spirit by birth. So when he completed, he carried it. I don't know how big that uh, Fudo statue. Big one is as high as uh, this ceiling. And I don't think that's the case. <coughs> At any rate, so he carried it and placed it by the waterfall and sat down. And since it is it was by the pool of the waterfall. Naturally, lots of water came down from the mountain side. And here's the point. Normally, most of us don't pay any attention. But on that particular day, he watched waterfall phenomena. And some of the bubbles runs a few feet and disappeared. Some of them even shorter and disappeared. Some of them even immediately disappeared. And this is according to this original turn, which is quite important, so I will explain. Translation said, accumulated karma. N is the term which I cannot find any exact equivalent. So in the future, it's best for us to use N as N. But like, more or less it means Dharma fate. We are here today because of our shukuen, accumulated dharma fate.
and we don't think that way normally. Well, let's go. There is a low house one day set. Well, <clears throat> anyway, you dis you think that you decided to come here. It looks that way. Meant to be here, you are forced to be here. You are controlled by the Dharma to be here. And this is what Shuku En means. So you may say, well, how about my own freedom, my own personal decision? And this is where the confusion uh, may come. You'd like to know, you'd like to think that it is your free decision. You are not forced to be here. And some of you are here this morning, but for whatever the reason, couldn't be here this afternoon. This too is Dharma fate. So there are two different ways to think. One is usual way. It is our decision, free decision to come. True, but another one is it is predetermined for you or for us to get together today. And the nations such as the United States. People love the individuality, personal decision, and freedom. Don't like to be regarded as you are in a category of predetermined Dharma fate. You had no choice but to be here. Anyway, whichever the case, there are not the two different uh, uh, conditions, actually. Just like uh, fundamental reality and the phenomenological reality, like water and bubble. Without water, no bubble appears. And when bubble disappeared, it becomes water. So what we think, it is my personal decision, is just like a bubble and uh, predetermined dharma fate is like a water. So until that day, Heishiro carved the Fudo Myo O Buddha statue and brought up to the mountain of Yoshihara and placed it by the waterfall and hoping that this would be a nice place for Fudo <clears throat> to be settled. And he just sat down. But he, here it comes. 
this bubble, disappearance bubble. Whether he had accumulated the fate or not, bubble disappeared anyway. But key point of this is he felt immense impermanency of life or any kind of phenomena. Now we know and we speak, nothing is permanent. Yes, nothing is permanent. The place where I live, almost every other month, the small shops are closing, a new shop appears. And they say that because of this expired and new rent is so high, so they change or they go or they stop their business. And then a few months later, renovation, a new shop appears. And this happens not on the Upper East Side, all over the world, actually. And we say, oh, nothing is permanent. Yes, nothing is permanent. A year ago, just one year ago, tomorrow, Owen Yuxon, descendant of Benjamin Franklin, passed away. And November the 4th, Ginny's grandma passed away. And uh, November 28th, Mr. Yuasa, at the age of 91, passed away. And they say, oh, nothing is permanent. So, we know nothing is permanent, yet the intense feeling of impermanency is due to our shuku-en. And unless you feel intense impermanency, the determination of doing Zazen would not come out. My teacher's teacher, Genpo Roshi, used to say, the person who start doing Zazen either lay person, lay brother or lay sister or monks or nuns, regardless of their category, if the original motive is impermanency, that is the strongest motivation. Anyway, Heishiro felt looking at all these bubble appearance and bubble disappearances. Bubble appearance, bubble disappearance. And the end of Diamond Sutra, as we all know, there's a very famous verse which goes, all composite things, like a dream, a fantasy, a bubble and a shadow, a dewdrop and flash of lightning, they are thus to be regarded. 
This is the key point of Diamond Sutra, as well as the key point of our view of this life in a capital L, as well as small L. So somehow Heishiro felt that on that day. And so it happened. This is another end. Fate. He heard someone was chanting or reading aloud that Takusui, Master Takusui's uh, sayings, which goes. For sentient beings with a daring spirit, awakening may happen without delay, while for sentient beings with a lazy spirit, attaining nirvana may take three asamkaya, asamkaya Carpus, thousands of thousands of millions of millions of years. Inspire, this too is an end. Someone may say, oh, that's one of these sayings. Or someone was immensely in, impressed and inspired. Heishiro's case was inspired. With great determination, he entered alone into the bus house. And uh, I don't know nowadays, uh, less and less, separated independent building called Basing House Furoba. Furo means bath. And uh, house is a building. The most of the monastery is Basing House is separated from the main building. So he found that basing house and entered it and looked from inside so that nobody could come in. And he never did the Zen before. And for the first time, and evidently, he was deeply determined and deeply inspired, or desperate. He became naturally desperate. Desperation. He shut the door, locked it from the inside, and sat down. Erecting his spine, he made a tight fist. This is an interesting thing. In the Rinzai Zen tradition, To do the Zen, our hands, we have to make the 
tight fist and placed it on our over our belly. And while Soto Zen tradition make this kind of mudra, right hand below, left hand above, and tip of the thumb, neither touch nor separate. And mudra looks like this. So neither touch nor separate. It's not like this. This is obviously touching each other. Nor this, this is obviously separating each other. So by neither touching each other nor separating each other, so concentration goes here. Constantly, are they touching? or are they separating? This is a Soto Zen style. And uh, Rinzai Zen make a fist, tight fist. But nowadays, except in uh, Rinzai Zen monastery in Japan, if you sit in this mudra, Jikijitsu will uh, walk with Kesaku, and uh, when he found the, this mudra, <laughs> it's not right. We have to do fists. Just in case, when you go to Japan, make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, I'm saying neither, I mean, either way is okay. The reason why I say either way is okay is because we don't know Shakyamuni Buddha what kind of mudra he made under the Bodhi tree in India? Was he making a fist or this mudra or maybe something else? So don't be so creative, but something that area. Anyway, getting back to Heishiro's case, made tight fist and kept his eyes open widely. He did this Zazen with a fresh, pure spirit. Delusions and hallucinations, as you know, flew around him like bees. When the battle was over, he had cut off his life root. That's not so simple, but <coughs> somehow story goes that way. He went into deep samadhi without a single thought. It's possible. It is possible. At dawn, when he heard the birds singing outside the bathhouse, he could not find his body. That some of you must have experienced the disappearance of your own body. Only pure consciousness. He felt as if his two eyes had left their sockets and were on the ground. An instant later, he felt the pain 
of his nail digging into his clinched fist. Then his eyes returned to their usual place and he was able to stand up. Sitting and standing, he repeated this kind of practice for three days and nights. On the morning of The third day, after washing his face, he looked at the trees in the garden. They seemed very, very, very different from before. He felt so strange. He visited a priest nearby. There is a temple called Ichijoji, Soto, Soto Shu Temple. Uh, so evidently he went there. But he said, I, I don't understand what you're talking about. Why don't you go to visit uh, Hakuin? is not so far from here. He lived in a town called Hara. Heishiro decided to visit Master Hakuin. He rode in Prang Queen and climbed Sat Peak. This is where nowadays under Sata Peak there's a tunnel where Shinkansen brute train is running. But now I went there once. One perhaps the best place where we can see the mount beauty of Mount Fuji and the uh, Pacific Ocean. So at the peak, Heishiro saw the panorama, panorama, panoramic view of Tagonora. Beautiful Pacific Ocean and beautiful Mount Fuji and uh, ready to change his preconceived ideas. As soon as he saw that Mount Fuji and the Pacific Ocean and many others, he suddenly realized thoroughly that what he had experienced in the bathhouse was none other than court grasses, trees, and good earth are primarily Buddha. Now, in the West, Creator, God, is only one. 
And in the east, even speck of dust can be regarded as Buddha. So externally, mountains, rivers, oceans, lakes, trees, you may say anything, they are quintessential what could be regarded in the West as creator. And this is the way uh, there is some difficulties and frictions may occur when you were born in the West and educated in the West and went to churches and synagogue and some other, other religious places and uh, got education, religious education. And this, nothing is bad, that's perfectly okay. Yet, when you are educated at school, or read books, and heard various people's talks, like uh, Krishnamurti, for example, the Indian philosopher, and some others, uh, D.T. Suzuki's book. So that you start to think, well, there is another way of looking at your very being. In other words, who am I after all? Since I mentioned about D.T. Suzuki, his friend, Perhaps you know his name, uh, Dr. Nishida. In his Waka poem, Waka means uh, 31 syllables poem, which goes this way. I will translate with my. First, let me read it in Japanese. Waga kokoro Fukaki fuchi ali yorokobimo Urei no nami mo todokaji to omo My mind has what is bottomless where the wave of joy nor wave of sorrow can be reached. Well, another translation may go this way. I have bottomless heart, mind. Neither joy nor sorrow. All kind of emotional, psychological phenomena
cannot be reached in another world. They are all included in this one bottomless heart. And Mr. Dr. Nishida, while reading his diary, he said, Zazen in the morning, study. Zazen in the afternoon, study. Zazen in the evening, study. Sitting, 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 sitting. And he called his own experience is called uh, pure. He did not call it Kensho, he did not call it Satori, he did not call it enlightenment. He just called it pure experience. The we, generally speaking, because of the language, I am speaking to you. The moment you are listening to me, and you are now judging whatever you have in your mind, what I am talking about. So this language structure already makes dualism. And because of this dualism, this pure experience where bottomless, where neither joy nor sorrow, nothing, just, they are just as they are. Like Nis Nisada Gattas, I am that, or I am, or am. This is when it comes to the arm. Right? No, what's the difference between arm and m? It's a you know, dog has a Buddha nature. Not that that level. We're talking about. I am that. I am, am, own, m. With this experience. Lay person, Heishiro, went to Hakuin's place. They met. Hakuin invited him to come to his Doksan room. And most likely, he asked. First question was, what do you see? Joshua's move. A monk asked Joshua, does a dog have a Buddha nature or not? Joshua said, move. As I said before, Heishiro never studied Zen nor Buddhism nor Zazen. So this must be the first time he heard this Joshua's move. And Hakuin was asking, what do you think? How do you see this? <clears throat> I don't know how he answered, but most likely his being was itself. He didn't have to say, I think. It's totally unnecessary.
This morning we had <coughs> our in Yuxan's <coughs> Ihai service and Jini uh, Joshi's grandma's service. And we think by saying so, we did something for. Yes, but it is something like saying, I am that. And Nisaka Datta, he, he, as you know very well, is an Indian philosopher. I am. Um, mood. And where, when it comes to this point, uh, we and the deceased individuals are not at all separated. In our ordinary way of thinking, that he passed away, he was cremated, he was buried, he is no longer speaking with us. Yes, but not that simple. and saying to the monks, now he, Heishiro, was a mere ordinary man. He had never studied or practiced them before. Nevertheless, sitting for only three days and nights, he was able to prove what Shakyamuni Buddha realized with nothing but his daring spirit. He fought his delusions and defeated them all. You, students of Dharma, why don't you have this daring spirit. You must arouse your determination. And you no know matter how many times Hakuin said, you must, you must, you must. And we know we must. And yet, until the time is ready, nothing can happen. And this is what shuku M means. The readiness of time is beyond arrangement. So, until we are ready, we just keep sitting. And even just seeing the bubbles, appear and disappear. One may start to think, well, life is short, I have to do something. So the fact is that we are here tonight, today, during Roha today, this is a good sign that time is ready for us to be not more determined, but to be continued 